Welcome back, dear friends. It moves. It's coming alive. How exciting. Right, next job. Next jobs. I've got this bit. Hang on a minute. Here we are. I've got this bit that's going to do the tensioner because I want to get the ball chain coming from something turned by the um, worm drive over here and then past the tensioner which is the, these two pieces so I can get all that fixed on by lining it all up with here. Now I've got but now I know where both ends are in effect I can get all this lined up and fixed down. Here's the original so there's the worm drive in there there's the pinion or whatever the gear, the gear. then there's oh I've got to make this up I can't work out where I got this from some of these bits were sort of Fisher Technic parts. Don't know where that came from, don't even know whether I made it, I can't remember, I'll have to work that out. And then the ball chain, and there's the tensioner, and then that obviously goes around turning that. There's nothing for it, I have to make one of these, because I don't know where I got it from, as I say. So, I've drawn out one, 5mm, and a little collet thing that I'm going to tap with a grub screw, which is 8mm, because it's a little bit tight under here. Um, now I'm going to glue them together, tap that, glue them together, and then I'm going to put it on the lathe and turn down the uh, pulley shape. This is absolutely nerve-wracking. If you'd watched the last video, you know that I ended up trying to align this with the back bit by drilling the wrong size hole and ruining it, and then having to make a jig up to line it up and all the rest of it. Then obviously I scratched this silver, which is really prone to scratching, unlike the brass, thankfully. So now I've, I've glued a little bung in here because the whole point of this centre bit is just to support one of these lovely little red gems. Sparkle, damn it, sort of. Oh, so it's like diffusing a bomb, sort of James Bond or something. I can't touch this. I've managed to put that glue, glue a bit in the middle with some blue tack. Now I've made this surround, which fits over the gem, and I've somehow got to glue this in position over the middle, oh god fathers, definitely not going to film that. Oh dear, oh dear, I'm all of a flutter. Because one touch on this, just the lightest finger touch or anything, and it'll mark. Even though it's been drying for, I don't know, about 12 hours now. Phew! I managed to get it done with the aid of blue tack and bits of wire and stuff. Just gently positioning it all but that'll look lovely as it's turning round it's the project that just keeps on giving look we've got a worm drive now and that as you can see slows down because the interesting about worm drive is it counts as one tooth so with normally gears that mesh together you've got the gear ratio the number of teeth against the number of teeth until you get to a worm drive and that's one so it's one say against to 15 or something so that's going to have to go around 15 times before that little thing goes once round which is fabulous and the other great thing about worm drives is they won't work they won't work backwards don't know why i've started talking about gears but I, they're fascinating things worm drives um so they're fa you've really useful for things like winches because they can't unwind they can only move what only the worm drive can move that's right so I can't twist this, I'm not going to twist that because I've just glued that on. So that's on, positioned carefully, so there's a little bit of movement there. And I've put some grease on the worm drive, I'll stop saying that word. And now I've come to fix this down. And to position it all, I used a piece of rod. So I've got that vertical that way and that way, and I've checked it from there to here, hence the angle. 
So I've screwed that down and now I've just got to put the last part of the tensioner move back a bit, last part of the tensioner here and then I'll be able to make up the ball chain and then when you've drilled the hole in the wrong place two millimetres too far to the right little top tip, matchstick and some super glue push it into the hole, snap it off and you can drill a new hole right beside it a bit of string is a really good way to work out how long a chain or some sort of linkage needs to be so you can just stretch it around, make a little mark, measure it Bob's your uncle. I've cut the ball chain to length, it's 3mm ball chain, it's ever such strong stuff, very useful. I mean it's used for raising and lowering blinds and things, it's very good. The only problem comes when you need to join the ends together. It, normally if you're using roller blinds you have a funny little slug shaped thing that hooks over the end two balls. Obviously that's not right and won't work when you need to use it mechanically. And the great thing about it of course is with some with drive belts and things and other chains they can only work in one dimension or two dimensions rather whereas because this is flexible all over the place you can change dimensions which is ever so useful I'm not going to go into this in great depth but you can get a tool like that which I can't see you put the end ball in the owl and it's got a spike and then you bring the spike down and open up that end ball which then should fall off, but obviously, because the camera is working, it's going to be stuck like the proverbial to the shovel. Typical. There, right. Now, what you're left with is a little eye piece, a little piece sticking out with a ball on the end, and then what you do on the other end, you open that up very carefully so you don't lose it, poke the eye in, and then close it up again which is why this tool has got this cup shape to enable you to squeeze the ball back into shape sadly this is for five millimetre ball chain and this is three so it doesn't work but I found a pair of pliers works just as well my brain is a muscle I've got this connected together beautifully it went really well and I've realised of course it's captive in here I've got no way of getting it round there I think I'm not going to undo that. I'm an idiot. I think I'll just have to unscrew this and slot it in. No, that won't work either. I'm going to have to, uns I'm going to, have to unscrew the pulley and the gear and lift the shaft out. That's right. I thought I'd video this because hopefully it's going to be really exciting. That's too annoying. <sighs> Oh well, I'll have to adjust it to make the chain longer. I'm just thinking back to when I built the first one. It's interesting because um, it looks lopsided. Because I started with this and then sort of slowly built bits and added bits as I worked across. I thought, oh look, there's a gap. I do like exciting gaps, especially when they just need to be filled with all sorts of exciting mechanical things. I thought, well, I wonder if, I can, if there's just room to get a governor there. And then some linkages, and sure enough there was, and it just filled up the space and made it look really nicely balanced. I'll get on with that. Well, before I start the governor, I thought I'd just put this lovely wheel. Where's the shine? There's the shine. I have finally got this gear on. Oh, and I've managed, despite removing it and reinserting it loads of times, to try and get it the right position without too much slack I managed not to scratch it, isn't that beautiful because you've even got the reflections of all this sort of stuff on it and the gem catching the light that's lovely so now that's the back bit complete so now I'm finally after a many full starts actually going to start on the governor that is going there that's what it needs to look like and what I've done down here I've cut out all the bits that I need. So I'm going to assemble the base bits first that hold the bearings and I'm going to start cutting away all these little bits. Here's the base of the governor. The bearing just pushed in. I've glued that little sort of stand bit in and as before using the vertical jig to glue this one in on. That's right. Let's talk balls, specifically 20mm unvarnished wooden ones. Because, look, I need them. They made the perfect 
weights, the counterweights for the governor. Obviously, I, it's not designed to have really heavy bits and pieces on it. Sprayed up, these are perfect. I also noticed I put another one on top of there just because I could, because it obviously balanced it somehow and visually looks nice. Well, I'll get on and get them painted. Now to make these bits and these bits. So I cut out two pieces like this from 10mm acrylic. I then drilled a hole very carefully just by hand on the pillar drill using hand-eye coordination rather than CAD or anything to get a 4mm hole drilled just down there. And then I stuck a, a piece of formal rod in it and then I set the bandsaw very carefully and just used it to push this in ever so gently and do two cuts. So we've now got that, and then what I've been doing is snapping the middle out. And then that leaves you that amazing little shape. So here's the top part finished. That's going to be spinning round. I'm going to put one this up, well, one the other, so as it turns they're both symmetrical, so to speak. Isn't that lovely? So that's worked beautifully. What I did was just to position these over it, mark the hole, the centre, and then drill it carefully. Again, just by hand-eye coordination. But it has worked very nicely. Now, I want to make this bit down here that lifts up and down. You'll see. Well, I've cut out two bits on the laser cutter. Drilled them out to five because that slip rod there that allows this bottom bit to move up and down is five millimetres diameter. Now I'm going to put them in the lathe and I can cut twiddly little bits like that and also most importantly this sort of bobbin shape down here. So something like that. It's coming on a treat. I can't tell you with my heck, as I've decided to call it, hand-eye coordination. It's just working a treat. It's lovely. I've got all this done. Next thing, I really can't put off doing this. That's got to be next. So I've got to work out how I stamped that flat when it passes through there. And I've got then the two silver balls on the ends. And there we have it. In fact, I didn't have to crush these pipes because I'd cut these slots slightly wider. They just fitted through. So look, it goes up and down like that now. Isn't that lovely? Just got back from taking the dog for a walk. This just shows you the quality of these lovely old things. I know I've mentioned it before, but I'm using this to amplify the sound from the useless LG smart television that doesn't have any audible speakers, so to speak. And the two bulbs incandescent bulbs I assume because this is so old that illuminated the LCD display for the cassette player um, one of them had blown ages ago and it was only sort of the top half was lit I just got back switched it on both bulbs have now healed themselves because the other one stopped working the other couple of days ago isn't that amazing self-healing as well <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant I got it when I was at college sort of 1986 or something and it's still going strong. Got some painting on as well. There's the two wooden balls with several coats of the chromium silver paint on. Here's all the little bits that I've now painted up. So I'll leave them drying, especially the silver because that takes so long to dry. And during the meanwhile, I thought I'd get on with this. Partly because I forgot to put this on now, or before, and there's nothing to stop me. But also I'd run out of chromium plated uh, four millimeter shaft and that's not ever such a long bit and I love the fact this bit's copper that bit is chromium plated then I remembered we got had to get a new fridge last year when the old one stopped working and it came with two of these clever things that you poke in underneath it and from the front once you've got it in situ you can twist this and it actually raises and lowers the feet on the back of the fridge. Really nice design. And I thought, oh, I can't throw away these two things. Just remembered, and what would you, Adam and Eve, they're four millimetres diameter, chromium plated. How oh, fantastic. I'm so pleased. And the moral of the story is never throw anything away. Keep everything. I do, 
which is why the workshop is as it is and quite a lot of the rest of the house as well. It's coming together nicely. It's the next day, so the paint's all dried. Ooh, there's a silver ball. Here's the bit that goes up and down, and he's free to spin like that. And then there's the pulley at the bottom that forces the top to go round. I'm just gluing these bits together now. It's all most enjoyable. We'll get back to you when hopefully it's all working. I'm just leaving this running, by the way just to help the gears to bed in and things. I've put some graphite powder on the teeth and it's already got an awful lot quieter. It's just as they bed in slightly to each other and it's also good to check that everything continues to work, which it is beautifully. So this is how the principle of a governor working. As it spins round, centrifugal or petal or whatever force makes the balls come out. And the faster it goes, the more they fly out the more they fly out, they, they pull up this centerpiece, and then that links to the steam control valve or whatever else is going to control the speed of the machine, and it keeps it self-regulating. Funnily enough, I discovered when I was fixing my lawnmower, petrol lawnmower, that also has a governor in it, but it uses air. It's got a fan on top of the engine that spins round, pushing against a sort of fan blade thing. There we are, a fan blade thing that looks like my hand going backwards and forwards. And that's what's attached to the, um, the throttle. Because you don't have a throttle on a um, lawnmower. And it just, as, as it gets too fast, it closes the throttle a bit. As it gets too slow, it speeds it up. Isn't that clever? I was amazed to discover that. I've got it fixed down. And look, it does work in principle. As you spin it fast, they do fly out. This is perfect. Oh, lovely. Now, I'm getting on with the linkages. Because somehow we have to get this movement over to a little valve here, a lever on there. So I've got some more of those little linkages and things sprayed up. They're nice and dry. I've taken the dog for a walk, so it's time to start assembling that. Well, that's nice. This very morrow, some more of this stuff arrived. It's the Wilco whatever that I used before. This is the original one, and you can see where I joined it, if you remember, without having the little sort of spiral pointy bit on each end. Focus! It's horrible, and I just really wasn't happy. It's been running perfectly and hasn't broken, um, but I wasn't happy with that. So, And the new one is smaller, it's thinner, which is absolutely fine. And it had got the spirals on the end. I've used all five pieces up because they weren't that long. So, look, we've got this one done now. Isn't that lovely? It's so nice the way that goes from vertical to horizontal. And as I say, I've replaced the back one with new bits. And I've got all this done now, as you can see. And, look, as it goes up and down... There's linkages and levers, more linkages, and it works. The steam valve regulator thingamabob. Lovely. Shall we try it, friends? Shall we switch it on? 1.5 voltaires. Look. Oh, isn't that lovely? I just love the differences. You've got rotary this direction there. You've got it there. It's just so much to see. It works so well at steampunk events because people would walk into the huge hall with lots of stalls and they'd just see this machine thing moving and just have to come over. All these things I've designed and built are so enjoyable because they're things that I would love to see in a steampunk event or in a museum or whatever. They just, they'd attract me or a junk shop or something, you know. You just get drawn to them like chitty chitty bang bang. Bebo and Ben, Heath Robinson, all the other greats, Jules Verne. Oh, it's fantastic. Right, next thing, I think, is to start wiring the other bits and pieces up. Oh, yes, and to make the little flickering limelight effect to see through the window. I will speak to you soon. This is the, this is the effect we're after. You might just be able to see the sort of, like, a brighter area, that's sort of like it, all flickering with some sort of vague idea there's a jet there and some sort of lime holder there or something. Inside I achieved it, I've just been studying it, 
using two um, flickering white LEDs. Now most light in Victorian times was nice soft sort of yellowy cream colours because it was gas or flames or whatever. Very unusual to get white. And it's the only time I use white LEDs in my machines. All the others are sort of perhaps warm white at the, the coldest but this is, looks so different. It's lovely. And I've sanded the front off one of the LEDs so that's what provides the overall illumination that's flickering. And then the one with the lens on the front of course I've realised produces that really white bright area. Oh lovely. So I've started by printing the, uh, the thing that the light shines through. Can you spot which piece of acetate I got the wrong way up? E.g. the uncoated side. I think you're right. I think it might be that one. The amazingness of a coated piece of plastic. Isn't that amazing, the difference? And the great thing is, with this coated acetate, you can put it through my, a normal printer. And I found I've fiddled at ages to try and find the right printer setting. It was vivid black and white or something. Vivid grayscale. Simple as that. Standard paper. Nothing else mattered. And it just beautifully prints. So I'll get them cut out. I think I doubled them up before. Um, just to make it really opaque or whatever the word is. I've got the two transparencies glued in with contact adhesive. Sensed up. I've just finished making this thing out of a bit of Vera board with the two flickering LEDs on it. One that's sanded down to illuminate the whole thing and the other one which should just illuminate the uh, little clear bit here. I'll get it glued in and we'll have a look. Got that fixed in and a little bit of tinkering and angling of diodes, LEDs. And look! That's really nice, I love that. Very pleased. Indeedy. Lovely, right, <laughs> just staring at it. Okay, let's get on with something else. Thanks very much for watching. I think this is long enough now. Hope to see you next time. As always, leave any questions in the comments. Hope to see you next time. Thanks again.